You've been married for many years and you love your partner, but sometimes the relationship feels stagnant. It's totally normal, but it's not something that we want to experience for a long time because we want to feel joy. We want to feel excitement. We want to have fun in our relationship. So how do you revitalize that feeling and bring the freshness back into the marriage? That's what we're talking about today. This is the Strength of Seduction podcast, the number one resource for black couples who want to build intimacy, love, and connection in their relationship. I'm your host, Daniel DiPiazza. My friends, welcome back to the Strength of Seduction podcast, the number one resource for black couples who want to build intimacy, love, and connection in their marriage. I'm your host, Daniel DiPiazza. Now, if you're new here and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for updates. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform like Apple or Spotify, make sure to subscribe and leave that review. We have an incredible episode for you today on revitalizing your marriage. But before we dive in, I have something special to share with you. Strength of Seduction is opening up free 30-minute coaching sessions to any podcast listener who wants to build more health, wealth, and intimacy into the relationship. On this call, we're going to take you through the Relationship Health Assessment. This is a comprehensive tool that we designed based on the feedback from over 17,000 beautiful black families who've been married for over 20 years, and we were able to take that information, take that data, and understand what makes true love work in our community. And we use that to help you uncover the strengths and find the biggest opportunities for growth in your marriage. So if you want to go through that relationship health assessment with a strength of suction coach, it's absolutely free. You get a free 30 minute coaching session. All you need to do is go to strengthofseduction.com forward slash coaching. That link will also be in our show notes. So it's strengthofseduction.com forward slash coaching. That's our gift to you for being a loyal listener, a follower of our brand and a customer of our products. Much love guys. Hope you guys enjoy this, today's episode. Let's jump right in. Now, just a quick note here. This episode was recorded in the uh, car. I recorded this in the car on my phone, actually, um, waiting for a friend of mine uh, that I was picking up at the airport. And I had to get this episode out and to your ears. So forgive any sound issues. Although, honestly, I listened to it just briefly uh, through it. And the sound is pretty good. The clarity is really good. It just shows you how far technology has come. But um, forgive any errors because it wasn't produced in studio. Okay, my friends, let's have a little chat today. Now, today's conversation is all about what to do when it feels like your relationship is more of a chore, when it feels like your marriage is something that you have to drudge your way through rather than enjoy. Let's really get to the heart of this. Everyone who's in a marriage or in a relationship is making a choice to be there. You choose your partner and you choose to stay with them. You choose to have kids with them and you choose to raise them. You choose to live your life the way that it is. And sometimes we lose sight of that because we've made choices and then they play out over time and we don't realize how our decisions affect our day-to-day -day life. We also sometimes stop taking ownership for the people and the places, the situations in our life. Now, this podcast isn't really about criticizing those uh, decisions. It's more about, first of all, bringing ownership and bringing responsibility back to the conversation because ultimately we're choosing this. And if it is true that we are choosing this, we are choosing the relationship, we're choosing to be in the marriage, we're choosing to be with the person, then if it feels to us that the relationship or the marriage is a chore, that it's a drudgery, that we have to pull our way through, that we're not really enjoying it, then we, and by we, I mean you, are the only person who can make a change in that regard. Now, this obviously makes things sound so easy because, well, it's really easy to talk about things. It's much harder to do them. And relationships are certainly no exception when it comes to that rule. But let's get really clear that if you're not feeling enthusiastic about your relationship, if you don't, if you don't feel happy and you're not having fun in the relationship, it's time for you to make some changes. Now, what I'm not, I'm not saying it's time for you to leave the relationship. No. First of all, I think that we should just be honest with each other that healthy relationship doesn't mean always happy relationship. That would be great. That would be ideal. But also a healthy relationship is going to have room for arguing. It's going to have room for frustration. It's going to have room for boredom. It's going to have room for just, just needs being met. So just because you're in a healthy relationship doesn't mean that you're always getting everything that you want. And it doesn't mean that you're always, uh, 
overjoyed and over the moon. But let's talk about the things that you can do when you know that you love the person, you know that you're enjoying the marriage on the whole, but things are slipping. Things are starting to feel stale. Things are starting to feel like they need a refresh. Here are some tips. Here are some things that you can work work towards. The first thing is really remember why it is that you fell in love. You know, uh, I was watching another another podcast, another person's podcast, uh, and they were talking. It was a, it was a divorce attorney being interviewed, and he said one of the saddest things that he sees is when couples get divorced, and all they can do is think about the things that they didn't like about the person, or all they can do is think about the event or the series of events that caused the relationship to deteriorate. And if you've been in a relationship with someone for a long time there's a great chance that there are many fond memories. And in fact, the reason why you fell in love with them is something that you probably still love to this day, but it might be buried underneath all the things that have gone on over the years, underneath complicated emotions and different situations. And it's really important to get back to that when we can to get back to that. One of the things I love about my wife is how goofy she is. She's so goofy. Now she's a, she's pretty much an introvert to the rest of the world, but around each other, we're so goofy. And that's one thing I really enjoy because, you know, I've tried that goofiness with other people. It doesn't come off the same way. We have a special language that we have and our special humor that we like to play with each other. And that's one of the reasons I fell in love with her. She was so different and so funny and so unique. And so not only do I try to notice that, and play with that and be in that energy with her, but also to give her compliments around it and say, yeah, I love how silly you are. I love how goofy you are. And there's a great saying, I'm paraphrasing it, but something along the lines of what you grow up or what you appreciate, appreciates what you shower with love grows more. So if you want someone to make a positive change, don't criticize them in the negative things they're doing encourage them with the positive things we're doing. If you want someone to eat better or, or get in better shape, encourage them when they go to the gym. Don't tear them down because they're not going. Similarly, if you want someone to give you their best qualities, the ones that made you fall in love, make sure to compliment those qualities because that's going to make them want to share with you and show you those things even more. And this goes for both men and women. So that's the first thing. If the relationship feels like it's slipping, make sure that you remember why you fell in love in the first place. Now, the second tip I have for you is that when you guys are experiencing a lot of arguments, when you're experiencing uh, a lot of disagreement, especially over everyday normal things that typically aren't big issues for you, one thing I can recommend is just a change of scenery. Sometimes we get so stuck in our same environment that we just get caught in these patterns. It gets agitating. It gets agitating to always be in the house. And we know that, you know, with COVID... It was, a, it was a strange and weird situation. It was wonderful and lovely in some ways to be with each other all this time and with our families. But a lot of the, a lot of the world hasn't actually gone back to pre-COVID. I mean, obviously, businesses are all open, but many of us are at home a lot more than we used to be probably, and I'm sure that trend will continue. And I think it's really important to change scenery up now. You know, you have family, and sometimes it's hard to get people to uh, watch the kids, and there's, there's obstacles and there's logistics to deal with, but... There's nothing wrong with a short mini vacation for mom and dad. There's nothing wrong with a staycation, just booking a hotel in the same city and just getting out of the house, changing the scenery. A lot of times what you're experiencing in those day-to-day frustrations, yes, there are elements of your partner that you're frustrated with, but it's also just frustration with sometimes feeling stagnant, getting annoyed with the same thing over and over again, and you just got to break out of the mold. So I would recommend that you focus less on the arguments and focus more on creating a new experience with each other. And oftentimes, at least I can relate in my relationship, our experiences we've had, the things we've shared over the years are the things that bring me the most joy. And if that's, since that's the case, I want to create as many of those experiences as possible. And if it's been a while since we've had a good experience, then we need to do something. I mean, we went to Mexico in February and that was great. We haven't had any other vacations this year. And I think it's time. You know, when you go for a year, God, let alone, you know, you just have, let's let's say you just had a baby and you've basically been in the house now for two years and you haven't left, that does something to the relationship. Even if you love being with your child, even if you love being in the house and you are a homebody naturally, a change in scenery also brings more appreciation for when you come back home. So it's not just about escaping the house, but it's also building some appreciation so you like it even more when you come back. 
So if you find yourself arguing a lot and coincidentally you find yourself doing the same things over and over again every day, spice it up by creating a new experience. And I guarantee you, you're not going to be arguing as much on a short little mini vacation uh, as you are at home. That's the truth. The third tip for your relationship, if it's feeling stagnant, if it's feeling stale, activate the youth in yourself. Activate the youth. Uh, now, Sarah and I have been together for, wow, 13 years this year because we celebrated our first Thanksgiving together in 2010. And uh, I remember some of the crazy stuff we did at that time, talking about activating youth. Oh, man, we did all this interesting stuff. We did. We went skinny dipping. We, uh, I think we, we tagged a bridge in Atlanta. We were graffiti the bridge. I'm not sure I would recommend that. Um, we went on crazy adventures. You know, we got lost in the woods sometimes. And granted, these are things that young people do. And as you get older, you get more responsible and you don't want to uh, put yourself in any risk. And I'm not saying go do something crazy, but I would think about the things that you guys were doing, especially if you've been together for a while. And if you've been together since you were a younger age, think about the things that you did when you were young, the mindless thing, the fun, the fun things. I mean, hell, even go to an arcade, you know, all the things that you do with your kids. Sometimes you do them just to please your kids. And then you realize, oh, wait, this is actually fun for me too. It's why sometimes Disney movies are really fun for adults, even though they have kind of like a set of different jokes that only the adults get. But I would encourage you guys to make a list of mindlessly fun things you guys can do, places you can go, things you can try that have no other outcome except fun. And isn't about anybody except you. And again, this is this is in with it with the realization that many people listening to this will have families, and you have to include those people at times. But also, this is your relationship. This is your marriage. So uh, there's something really to be said about obviously when children are born, and as you're raising them, they're your priority. But at the end of the day, you're not married to your children. You're married to your spouse. And so there's a certain amount of needs that have to get met between each other before those needs can really be fulfilled to the kids, right? Because if both of you aren't happy in your relationship, then the kids are not going to be happy, guaranteed. And if you're not getting your needs met in the relationship, you're not going to be happy. Now, there will be times when it's just like, look, you know, everyone's not going to get their needs met and the kids need help or someone is sick and they need support or there's something going on that's happening right now and it needs it needs everyone's attention right now. But ultimately, when you come back to normalcy and the things start to reset, you want to really hold each other in that, in that, at that standard of we're meeting each other's needs so we can meet everyone else's needs as a team. And part of it just goes back to, yeah, creating that time. So find that time to do something that's just for you guys, that's reliving your youth, that's doing something that you wouldn't normally do. Make a list of things that you wouldn't do now because you're too old, the concert that you wouldn't go to, the the you know the place you wouldn't stay out at because you know you're you're in your forties now and do that thing. If anything, just to add some randomness and some variety to your life, to add some new opportunities to your life. There's an author named uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and he talks about the idea of when we when we do the same thing that we always do, we create a predictable future that's based on the past. So when your brain already knows what to expect for the day, it starts to get you into this state of already essentially programming your emotions to react throughout the day to things you expect to happen. You wake up and you get out of the bed at the same side, on the same side, you brush your teeth in the same way with your right hand in the top right corner first, then to the bottom left corner. You know, you go to the the kitchen, you get the same foods, you drive the same route to work, but all this creates a programming that essentially um, makes you predict the future. But then what happens is you predict the future and you start living into the future and creating the future based on your past because you're only doing the things you have done. And so you create this, almost this, this, uh, oh, I don't know, it's almost like a, like a calcification around your life where things don't really change. So what's important is that you, do, you purposely do new things that are outside of the norm because that's where you, where you create the opportunity for new things to enter into your life. There's another movie I really love. It's called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And the idea behind that movie is you have to do weird, random, interesting, different things to be able to jump times and go to a different time, a different, a different reality, um, essentially hopping timelines. And the idea is that 
look, the person who you are right now wouldn't do this outlandish thing. So we're going to do that thing and see what happens. So again, you know, play within your own comfort zones to a certain extent, within your own interests, but also stretch yourself and do things that you wouldn't even have expected yourself to do and see what new opportunities come from that and do things that your younger self would really love, but maybe your older self would be a little bit skeptical about. Get a new tattoo. Go skydiving. Do the things that make you laugh and keep you young. Fourth, and this is the big one, you are in this marriage and you're not committed to just that person as they are now. You're committed to their evolution. So I want you to remember that. Make sure that when you're in this relationship and you're being the best partner that you can be, it's not so just that they can get what they want right now. You, you can help your partner get their needs met, but also so that you can support them and getting them to the next level of where they, where they hope to go, of their evolution. And if you guys are married and you're truly in love and you want to be on the same page with each other, then you have to look at what the future goals are for your person, for your partner, and do the best you can to help them live into that version of themselves. Because when they feel you invested, not just in them, but also in their goals, in their dreams, in their evolution, even if this is an unsaid thing, they're going to reciprocate that. They're going to appreciate that. And you're going to feel their love because they're going to feel that it's not just, it's not just them that you're embracing. It's their journey. And we all go through a journey. Again, you know, uh, with Sarah, Sarah's finishing up her first degree here. Uh, she'll be, she's finishing up her bachelor's degree. She'll be working on her master's soon. Now, some people would say she's late because she just, she's in her thirties now, you know? So some people would say she's late. And to me, I just think, well, that's your journey. You know, everyone has their own timelines for things and everyone has their own, their own life story. Everyone has, uh, the order in which they're supposed to go. And everyone for themselves is right on time. So you have to appreciate where everyone is in their journey and support them where they're at and to where they're going. And when they can feel that, they'll be even more in love with you, even if you never say it. Now, here's the fifth thing to remember. And this is, I think, probably the most important part. You have to create a collective vision for each other. You have to have, or not for each other, with each other, with your partner. You have to be able to um, come together on a shared dream with shared goals and now those can be in a number of ways. Those can be financial goals. Those can be um, those can be family goals. They can be health goals. They can be hell. They can be um, you know home decor goals. You know it's all part of it. But the more shared your vision is for your life, the easier you'll be able to see if you guys are both on track to getting where you want to go. And the more you can celebrate when you get there because you guys know that you plan this together. And sometimes you'll notice spouses who are basically trying to live two essentially completely different lives, but just side by side. And although it is true that ultimately we are in this alone to a certain extent, you know, you, you're born as a solo individual and you will die as a solo individual. We're interacting with people and we're involved with people. And so in order to get the best out of ourselves in regard to our relationships, we have to have things that we're working towards together just as if marriage were a business. You couldn't have team members who are working at different goals. And so that's what I want to leave you with, to sh create a shared dream. Now, it could be something that's very concrete. You could create a, a shared vision board or, or some sort of dream journal. Or you could just talk about it on a weekly basis. Many couples, myself included, uh, with my wife, will have like marriage meetings where once a week we'll just sit down and say, all right, well, where are we at? What are we doing? What's important for us right now? Where are we at with our money goals? What's going on? And that alone is enough to make a huge difference in making people feel heard and seen and appreciated. And that's really what it is. So I hope that these were really important and impactful for you. You know, when it comes down to it for me, you know, bringing back that feeling of why you fell in love with someone, renewing that youthful energy, creating shared dreams with each other. These are all just some of the important things that can make a relationship that felt stagnant begin to breathe new life. And remember, you can, you can take a, a plant, you know, that is, um, that's potted and the plant itself is full of life and full of vibrancy. But if you keep it in a pot that's too small or you don't change the soil, certainly if you don't water it, it'll die. But all you have to do is expand that pot, give it a little bit more sunlight. And that same pot, that same, that same plant that was struggling will be renewed with 
new vibrancy with new leaves and new growth and definitely bear fruit. So I hope these were useful tips for you today. That is it for the Strength of Seduction podcast today. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you like and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us on. If you want your free coaching session, just go to strengthofseduction.com forward slash coaching to get your free 30-minute relationship health assessment. And of course, guys, love fiercely, communicate openly, and always find your way back to each other. Catch you next time. This is Daniel.